The slabs I'm using to actually lay this patio are these. These are grey limestone slabs. I went for limestone because I like the simple pattern of them. I also really was quite keen on getting these bigger slabs. So these are 900 mil by 600 mil. They're really heavy. So if your lower back is like mine, just get ready. It's going to be painful. I got them from a website called Universal Paving. I got a really good deal in the end. And actually a few of them did turn up damaged but Universal Paving were really good about it and they refunded me for the damaged ones as well. So I've got 52 slabs in total. I did over order 10%, which is what they recommend to do. And I think out of them 52, about four of them turned up with some sort of damage. I am gonna be able to use some of them as cut, so it's not as, as bad as that sounds, um, but that's where you need to account for that 10% at the beginning. Now, the first thing you wanna do when you are prepping for a patio is, is actually make sure that you've got enough depth for all of the hardcore and cement to actually go below them. Now, I knew that the finish level of my patio is the top of the gravel board of the fence, and what I did then was set up a string line so I knew the level of this hot entire patio, and then I could dip down with my tape measure just to make sure that when I was digging out, I had exactly six inches or 150 mil. What this will then allow you to do is have four inches or 100 mil of this hardcore sub-base MOT stuff. Um, I needed, I think, just short of seven tons in the end for an area of 30 square meters. And it will also allow me to have one inch of cement below the slab, and then also takes into account the one inch thickness of the slab itself. So make sure that you don't skimp out on this step. The key to any good patio is gonna be in the preparation itself. If you wanna go hardcore on the hardcore, then you could dig out more, but definitely don't do less because a good patio, if you want it to last a long time, needs a decent amount of hardcore below it. Now, because I've still got the whacker plate here and I have laid a couple of rows of slabs, what I'm doing as I go along is using this really long level that I've got on the top of the slabs here and then getting my tape measure and dipping it along just to make sure that I've got enough depth for my cement and the actual slabs. Now, what I'm hoping for here along the entire way is two inches. Like I say, one inch for the cement and one inch for the slabs themselves. Now, if I measure there, I've got pretty much exactly two inches, which is great because I'm not gonna be overusing cement and increasing the cost of this patio, but I am a touch high here and I'm also a bit high here. So I am gonna just get my rake and just rake this over and then I'll get the whacker plate out and just harden this over before I actually start laying. Before we lay any slabs, we've got to set up a string line. So I'm going to bang in one of these metal rods down here and then I'll measure out down that end. So we've got a string line so I know exactly where I'm laying to. So now I'm just going to get myself another pole and these are 600 wide. I want therefore it to be in one centimeter past that. So I'm going to go there. I'm just going to bang this in here. This is quite a long pole. And I don't want to impale myself on it. So I'm going to get it in quite a lot. And then with a spirit level on these slabs, I'll be able to get it at the right height. So I want it touching there. No. I'm just gonna set that up. Get a good few loops round, push that in there like that. And now I've got a line that I know what I'm working towards. I'll just double check that here. Okay, so I can see I've got that too high. So what I'm gonna do is just bang this down. There we go. As you can see, I now have a string line going all the way. So when I put the slabs in, I know that they're at the right level on that end. And obviously the other end has just got a finished level with the existing slabs that I've already got in. With every single slab, I am putting this stuff on it because I read it on the internet that that's a good thing. Uh, it's priming slurry. So I'm just gonna mix some of this up and then for every slab before it goes down, I'm gonna put this on the backside and that is gonna help keep the moisture getting sucked out of the mortar, I think. So I'm just putting in a rough amount of water in there. I know the consistency I'm aiming for. Now I've done that. I'm just gonna get a roller, dip it in this stuff, just apply it to this. It does stain everything, so just be careful with this stuff. That's it. For the cement itself, we're doing a four and a half to one mix, mainly because I read online a lot of people saying do four to one and a lot of people say do five to one. So I thought if I do in between, I can't get it wrong. We're using a bucket to actually measure out what one is. So we're doing four and a half buckets and then one full bucket of cement and putting the water in just to make sure it's the right consistency. You don't want it too wet, otherwise you'll be pissing about for ages, but if it's too thick, it'll dry out too quick as well. Jordan knows what he's doing. So we're getting a good thickness. Another tip I've got when you're laying slabs, 
is make sure you've got a bucket of water on hand at all times and get yourself a big sponge. I was messing about with a house sponge on the first time and it is taking all day. So whenever you get any like muck or cement on the side of one of these slabs, you want to keep it clean, otherwise you're going to make your life a lot harder. So just make sure you're wiping off each edge as each slab goes in. And then obviously when you're done for the day, just give everything a final scrub over, but go and spend a quid on a big sponge. You won't regret it. As you can see, we have laid most of this patio. I'm 15 slabs in now. We've only got a couple left and I feel like I'm getting a lot better at it. So Jordan's just bringing the muck over and then I'm going to show you how a bit of practice makes, I'm not going to say perfect. Practice makes what? Practice makes all right, acceptable. So Jordan's going to give me a few spoonfuls of muck. I'm also using a trowel now to feel a bit more confident. So because we've got quite a high sub base, we only need about four big spoonfuls of cement we're finding, sort of getting into the flow of it now. So I'll spread that out. So I'm just using a plaster as trowel at first to get it into its rough area, rough height. You watch me mess this up now, I've told you I'm doing well. So I know that roughly now, I could probably put the slab on that and that would be about right, but that's not what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna first do this little pad. I don't know why, it just feels right. And I'm gonna get my trowel, and then I'm gonna furrow it. So you sort of you sort of finesse, finesse the cement. Be gentle with it. Okay, and that's gonna make ripples. So when I hammer it down in a second, the cement has somewhere to go. But then I don't just stop here. What I found works really well, because sometimes I'm a bit low or high in the corners, is getting a little scoop. Every corner, um, blobbing a little bit in like that. You can sort of see the consistency of the cement. It's wet icing sugar. You're aiming for icing sugar. So I've made a load of 10 mil spacers because that is what these patio slabs recommend. So I'm just literally gonna pop two in at the side and two in at the back. And that's gonna hopefully fall in there nice. So Jordan's bringing over the slab now. Beautiful. So you can see that pretty much that's almost perfect straight away, but it's not quite perfect. So that's where you get the mallet. Just going to give it a little tap here. Because these limestone slabs aren't perfectly flat, you're never going to get dead level once you put an actual spirit level over it because of the natural texture of the actual slab. So really you are at the edges, you're going off feel, and then at the other edges, you're just going for your string line. So you've got, I've got my string line at the back here, so I can see that this corner wants to come down a little, so I'll give that a few light taps. The thing I really care about is these two spaces at the back being about right, which they are. Sling it along here. Let's see where we are. And there we go. Okay, so I've checked the levels. So we're good that way. And we're good the other ways. So that's in. But yeah, that's how you lay a slab. So the next job, it's about three o'clock. The next job is to obviously clean down all your tools. Keep your tools clean and your tools will be clean. That's what they say. Okay, so here we are back at the patio two days later. I've given it two days so I know everything is set and everything's level and gone hard before I actually get to the grouting. Now for the grouting compound, I've gone for this. It's the Syker Fast Fix. I've never used it before. I've read online, some people love it, some people hate it. I know a builder who recommended this, so this is what I've decided to go for. Now the first thing that I'm going to need to do before putting this down is just grab my hoover and hoover out all of the debris that's actually sat within each of the slabs. So I'm going to do that first. Now, once you've got everything hoovered out, the next thing you're going to want to do is get everything really wet. Now, because this is quite a large patio, I'm not going to get it all wet at once. It's a hot day, it would just end up drying up. So I'm just using a watering can. I'm going to wet the area that I'm going to do first and then move on. Okay, so now it's time for the really fun bit where I get to actually put the grout in. So let's open it up and see how it works. I've got, I've got the tub here. You get two bags actually in the tub. You don't need both of them. You can open one at a time. Now, once you open these up, you do only get one hour to use them. So that's why it's important you get everything ready and you're not tripping over yourself. You know, you want to open one of these up and be ready to go. And if you are wondering, I went for deep gray because I think that'd be a nice contrast to these gray limestone tiles. Pour this over the gap that you are filling. I'm just going to brush that into the crack. And then once I'm happy that it's fairly in there. I'm just going to get a pointing trowel and start to really force it in. And this is the step that often people go wrong. If you don't force it in there and compact it, it's going to let too much water in. It will never dry out and it'll be, it'll be awful. It'll just fall out as soon as you get weather. So make sure you take your time and really force it down. So yeah, just keep working it in. You know, if you have to, if you, if you've, got uh, cracks that are wide enough, just push your finger down just so you're certain, but you just want to make sure that it's really compact and there's actually no space below any of this stuff uh, where there's like air or pockets of 
anything else other than this sand. Okay, so in terms of cost, obviously it was a lot cheaper to do this myself than it was to get professionals in to actually lay this for me. However, now I've done it, I will just say that this isn't an easy DIY job. I think that this is one of the harder things that you can take on yourself. If you are a handy person that's used to doing this type of thing, then I would definitely back yourself. You're probably gonna do a great job. However, if you have less experience doing this sort of thing, then I would probably recommend you seriously consider either paying a professional, or if you have to, really take your time and make sure that each slab goes in properly and do not skip on any of the preparation phase at all. That's gonna be the most important step to getting this right and making sure it lasts a long time. I'll have on the screen a breakdown of everything that made up the total cost. All in all, everything come to £1,269. Some of the big things to call out were the slabs costing me £575 and that grout. In the end, I did need four tubs of it, which was £124. Um, I did overorder on Hardcore a little bit. I got seven tonnes. I think six would have done, so I could have saved a little bit of money there. And I was very lucky. There were th certain things that I didn't have to pay for that most people probably will. So things like hiring a cement mixer, you can expect to pay about 20 pounds a day for that. A whacker plate, that's gonna set you back about 35 pounds a day. You could just use that for one day if you were organized. The weed fabric, uh, luckily I had a friend that had some available, so he'd give me that for free. However, you can probably expect to pay around 50 pounds for this area of weed fabric. And I did have a friend helping me out. Luckily we work on favors, so he did that for free. However, if you are gonna pay someone, you can probably expect to pay someone about 100 to 150 pounds a day to make sure that you've constantly got cement ready to lay that next slab which is obviously going to speed you up a lot however all in all for call it 1300 pounds i'm really happy with the overall quality of this patio and really happy that i took this on myself i did speak to a builder and they told me that i would probably be looking to pay within the region of about four to five thousand pounds to have this fitted so i've saved myself a decent amount of money and i'm very happy with it that's it all done if you liked this video then please go ahead and click the like button consider subscribing and until next time happy building.